So today let's talk about this karmic play. It's not fatalistic. It's not punitive that a universe wants to punish you. It gives you an opportunity to free yourself of all the old patterns that you have created. That you have created. The divine gives you an open field to play. But it holds you in what is called Maya. That creates the play, right? She creates an illusion that you have become diminished from the divine. You have become less than it. She has created this play to make you a seeker. But you were her, in essence. But you have forgotten that. In this mic hold, in this illusion, you think you are helpless. Oh, God, help me. But you're never helpless. You think you don't know anything, but your soul knows everything. You think you don't have the power to act, but you have awesome power if you tap into it. So the uncovering of the veil of Maya is required. Because otherwise you live in ignorance, Thomas, and you operate like a beggar, like a victim of destiny. Oh, it's karma. No, no, you misunderstand what karma is. Karma is a beautiful play that allows you to transform your destiny. But you need to see it. The seeing is important. You need to see that it's a play. You need to understand and become awakened to it and appreciate it. But it's a play. You don't die. You don't die. You're not sick. The body may be challenged, but not you. Or you sh it shouldn't be you. You're not sick. You're not frail. You're not old. That's ignorance. That's totally caught in Maya. You're not poor. You can attract anything you want from the universe. Anything you want. You own the universe, but you don't know that. <laughs> You're like a beggar, begging every day, Lord, give me this. You go put up flowers by the, by the murti. You're doing your beads or rosary or tasbih and just thinking that, that God will help you. You're not a beggar. You own it. But you need to come back to that consciousness that you that you own the universe. <laughs> oh my God, what a play. To wake up from that play is the most beautiful thing you can think about. If only you desire to wake up, to know more. You cannot know more if you don't desire it. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be open to you. Biblical statement. You need to be a seeker in the journey. You need to want to know more. You want to come out of this beggar mode of Maya. You want to open the veil, lift the veil of Maya that covers your perception. But first you need to understand that you have created everything that you experience now. And you are seeing the universe through your level of consciousness. What is your level of consciousness? If you're in a tamasic level of consciousness, that's how you see the world. If you're in rajasic, Level of consciousness, which is ego, that's how you see the world. And if you're in sattvic consciousness, that's how you see the world. And if you're beyond all three, wow, you have a transcendental vision. You have a beyond vision of the whole space. Do you want to stay in a tamasic mode or a jasic mode? This dwapari yuga that we're in is governed by tamas, ignorance, and rajas, ego. Look across the world and see. How many pure leaders do you see? How many pure business people do you see? How many pure saints do you see? How many? Few. 
<laughs> so be careful of who leads you, who guides you, and who tells you how to pray. But the most beautiful thing is if you seek, the inner guide will wake up. If you seek, the entire universe will support you and help you to wake up. And in a universe, you know, in the old days when we had to go to libraries, look for a book, search for knowledge, we don't do that today. We take up a mobile phone. And we can Google anything. And the whole library is right here. The whole universe can guide you. The person who is next to you can guide you. The broken relationship can guide you. The body challenge with illness can guide you. The neighbor who you think is ignorant can tell you something that is useful in the journey. The whole universe is governed by the divine. And it can guide you. That's what happened to me at 20. I began to look for the universe to guide me. And it absolutely did. But it's important to take responsibility for where you are now. Don't think that somebody led you there. The illness that you may experience, the broken relationship, the lack of abundance, it's all due to you. Look for where the limitation is inside of you. And begin to remove it. And then life changes around you. Open the consciousness to see more than life changes around you. As you begin to act from a higher consciousness, life changes around you. So you are the architect of your own destiny. You are the, the master of the play, but you need to know it. Don't blame anyone. Don't blame anyone. You can change from this moment, not tomorrow, not next week. This moment you can change. But you need to be the seeker. You need to want to change. You need to want to see more. You must be hungry because when you're hungry, you'll be fed. Don't live like victims of destiny because you're not. This morning I showed you how to tap into the field. How many of you in the meditation tapped into the field that you can feel its vitality through every part of your body? How many of you did it? That tells how true your seeking is. And when you leave here, do you continue the teachings? Does it wrap your mind that you want to continuously think about it till you solve it? Till you find what you're looking for? Does it wrap your mind until you find it? That's the kind of seeker I've been. So you can change the whole game. Karma gives an opportunity for change. Don't blame the divine. And don't see it as a battle. Oh, this karma is a battle. It's not a battle. It's a play. <laughs> and I've said, when you're ignorant, you see a battle. When you seek wisdom, you see a play. Ignorance leads you to battle. Wisdom holds you in a play. Be wise and play. Have a blessed day, everyone. <laughs> Namaskar. Be wise and play. <laughs>